In the neighbourhood of Ridgewood in Queens, bordering Bushwick in Brooklyn, a historical tale unfolds from 163 years ago. Back in November 1861, John Welts made a noteworthy acquisition, purchasing four acres of land at the southeast corner of Myrtle and Wyckoff Avenues. This area, now known as Ridgewood, was then part of East Williamsburg in the city of Brooklyn. Notably, Brooklyn was not yet a part of New York City and remained its own city until 1898. Welts paid $210 per acre, totaling $840 for the land, which was previously part of the Nicholas Wyckoff farm. Today, as we walk along the road where the brewery once stood, it's worth noting the rich history that unfolded here. Welts constructed the High Ground Brewery on this land, named after the nearby High Ground Park at Grove Street and Myrtle Avenue. The brewery's capacity was expanded to an impressive 620,000 gallons of beer per year. In 1877, a significant development occurred when Charles Zerwick, who had previously served as the brewmeister for Jacob Marquardt's brewery on Cypress Hills Road, married Emily Welts, John Welts's daughter. A fire in May 1877 had destroyed Marquardt's brewery, leading Charles Zerwick to leave the business. Zerwick then joined Welts's brewery as brewmeister, marking the beginning of a new era for the brewery. John Welts Sr. retired in 1883, passing the business to his son, John Welts Jr., and his son-in-law, Charles Zerwick. This transition led to a change in the brewery's name to Welts and Zerwick, operating as a partnership. The brewery's popularity soared, with Welts and Zerwick beer becoming a staple in local saloons and at the Glendale Schutzen Park, a favoured picnic spot. The park attracted approximately 30,000 people during the first National Schutzen Fest on July the 7th, 1895, with Welts and Zerwick beer being the beverage of choice. With profits from the brewery, the owners invested in vast tracts of land around the Glendale section of Queens. The brewery's capacity grew rampantly to 500,000 barrels of beer per year, a remarkable increase from its humble beginnings. To expand distribution, they opened a supply depot in Coney Island and supplied beer to Peter Becker's Columbia Park in Middle Village. In 1900, Welts and Zerwick Brewery signed a five-year lease to operate Glendale Schutzen Park exclusively, ensuring only their beer was served at the park. They also purchased half of Lewis Booser's Webster Gardens Picnic Park in Glendale. Carl Zerwick, Charles Zerwick's son, took over as the brewmeister of Welts and Zerwick brewing Pilsner Light and Gambrinus Dark beers. At its peak, the brewery employed 200 men. However, the advent of National Prohibition in 1920 forced the company to shut down part of the brewery, leading them to produce near beer with less than half of 1% alcohol by volume, along with soda. On September the 30th, 1925, Welts and Zerwick sold the brewery building and land for $100, and other valuable considerations totaling $860,000. The majority of the old brewery was demolished, and the RKO Madison Theatre and various stores were built in its place, marking the end of an era for Welts and Zerwick Brewery. What we see today is how the area looks now, following the rebuilding of the neighbourhood after the demolition of the old brewery.